I start. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Fang Zhi. I'm from Alibaba Infrastructure uh, Service Department. Uh, today, I'd like to show the um, immerse, immersion cooling in Alibaba. So, uh, my talk was my topic was divided into um, background and today's data center challenges and why we chose immersion cooling and the challenges of immersion cooling. The final will, will I, I want to show the Alibaba uh, progress and the uh, future plan. So from this slide, we know that um, by 2020, more than 15 billion devices will be connected to the internet and uh, generate more than over uh, 44 gigabit, uh, gigabit data every year. So, so rapid increase in data requires more and more computing performance to analysis and the process. So with the uh, improvement of computing performance, the power consumption is significantly increased. Uh, take the CPU, for example. I remember that in 2012, the uh, Intel Sandy Bridge generation CPU, the maximum CPU is what, it's about, I remember that it's 135 watts each. Um, the latest CPU, Skylake, uh, the maximum power consumption is uh, 240. Um, and the latest GPU Tesla we have 100 is about the same. It's very, uh, the consumption is very high. So the server node power consumption is highly every year because it integrates the CPU and GPU and other devices. The power of latest generation in one U standard server is even more than 500 volts per node. I think that is a conservative, conservative estimate. So what about the today's data, data center challenges? Let's take a look at the uh, rack power density trend. The left picture shows that the um, rack power density is growing rapidly in recent years, it's nearly um, 40, 40 k watts, 40 k watts per rack um, in recent years. So uh, even we heard that some of the industry guys told uh, told me that it's more than uh, more than 40 40 k watts today. So it's growing rapidly. Mm. The right picture shows that the air cooling um, cannot meet the uh, thermal demand on the acceptable cost when the power density is more than 25 kilowatts or to 30 kilowatts per rack. So obviously, the data center needs new thermal approaches. The Uptime Institute survey reports a wide range of PoE from over 1,000 data centers. The average PoE is about 1.8, more or less. We can see that only 6% of respondents claim a PoE less than 1.3. Not any company can build data center in the North Side Arctic. So, um, the PoE around the um, is very little high to uh, its problem. So we can see the right picture. It describes a typical distribution, uh, distribution of power usage in a traditional data center. About 33% of power is used for cooling. We know the formula to calculate PoE how to achieve low PoE and optimize the TCO, that's become a new challenge. So it sounds like a better way coming.
First, we want to uh, describe what is about what is uh, immersion cooling. We, uh, we um, put the IT equipment, such as server or storage or something, directly immersed in the uh, liquid. The liquid is non-conductive. The liquid can absorb the heat uh, generated by the IT equipment. The heat is uh, transferred to the outdoor um, water loop through the uh, CDU heat exchanger. Because the um, liquid has a better specific heat capacity than air, we purchase some 3M fluids. Um, from the right picture, we can see that between the um, traditional air-cooled data center, hybrid cooling data center, and the immersion cooling data center, there's no air condition in the uh, data center, in the immersion cooling data center. So it can um, get a low PoE reach to 1.05 to 1.07. This is the actual running data in Alibaba. We compared uh, three cooling approaches uh, between air, uh, air cooling, uh, traditional air cooling, and uh, cold plate and uh, immersion cooling. The three approaches in the table. The plus means better. From this table, we can see that the immersion cooling is better than other two in majority items, especially um, the best cooling capacity, the lowest, lowest TCO PoE, and some uh, heat recovery, energy efficiency, and noise and corrosion. On the premise of uh, acceptable cost, the air cooling can only hold 25 to 30 kilowatts per rack. The immersion cooling can hold the maximum over 100 kilowatts per tank, even more. Increased, uh, increased uh, uh, at least 300% of higher density. Next, we compare the energy consumption of the uh, immersion cooling and the air cooling. Uh, for example, in the uh, China South high temperature area, often the air cooling data center PoE can reach to 1.5. The immersion, immersion cooling can be 1.07. So considering the, the, uh, that there are no fans in server anymore, totally 33% of uh, power can be reduced. We know that the uh, uh, one, kilo, one kilowatt hour means one kilogram uh, carbon dioxide emission. So it can reduce three tons carbon dioxide emission per IT kilowatts per year. So much power reduction and the elimination of uh, air conditioner purchase capex, the TCO should be optimized, but how much optimization depends on the TCO model of your company. In Alibaba, the TCO can be optimized nearly 5%. Additionally, um, the immersion cooling can bring the servers higher reliability. Um, the left picture shows, just uh, for reference, uh, the electronic failure can be divided into uh, some factors, uh, high temperature, vibration, humidity, and dust. But the immersion cooling, the, um, the server can be isolated from, from air. No air, no humidity, no dust, and the temperature can be controlled, and no fans and no vibration.
we cannot provide the um, convincing measurable uh, measure data right now, but theoretically, the uh, immersion cooling can take the system higher reliability. What's about the challenges of immersion cooling? It's a lot. Um, immersion cooling is not a new technology, but it's, it is not popular in DC data center right now. Um, the first reason I think is the air cooling can cover large parts of scenarios, but the future, uh, the high power density is coming. So maybe in, in the future, the air cooling cannot cover the scenario, the immersion cooling should be up deployed. The second reason I think it's really the um, immersion cooling had a lot of challenges. Uh, we divided it into the uh, challenges into three level, basic level, component level, and system level. Basic level first. So um, for material capability, the liquid should be compatible with all the materials uh, immersed in the liquid. So it includes uh, a large amount of um, chemistry elements, including tin, aluminum, aluminum uh, silver, gold, a lot of different plastic, uh, different uh, windows, cables, connectors, and anything. Um, we did over 200 uh, uh, material compatibility test. Yeah. So for the signal integrity, we know that the um, uh, dielectric coefficient, the air uh, dielectric coefficient is one, but the fluid we used is two. So every high-speed high signal should be tested, should be work well. So it is recommended that the high-speed signals are wired in the middle layer. For the heat dissipation technology, uh, heat dissipation safe treatment, in the air cooling system, there is a grease between the heat sink and the CPU. But in the liquid cooling system, it needs to select a appropriate material to spread the, the surface, the heat surface, to improve the heat dissipation efficiency. For component level, we validate the performance and the capability of CPU, storage, memory, HBA, and other, uh, other uh, motherboard or some, some et cetera in liquid, in liquid. Especially, uh, you know that the, the light is refractive in liquid. So we have to find uh, appropriate optical devices that is sealed well. Single mode optical module is preferred because it uh, uh, can be isolated from the air, from the, from the uh, just liquid. There's no doubt that the, all the performance, stability, and the energy efficiency should be tested. For system level, um, it includes the several architecture design, tank design, data center cabling, liquid cooling pipe, layout design, system temperature and the liquid capacity monitoring and the alarming system design, and the remote management system design. It's really a complicated stuff. I, it's really hard to fully cover it in the walls. Um, take the Tank ceiling, for example, we have twice uh, liquid leakage. So the first time improper, improper uh, the tank transportation, 
leads to tank bottom uh, a little slightly crack. It's very hard to find by naked air. The second time, the external environment without air condition, so the rapid temperature uh, rise can lead to uh, will lead to the condensa condensation on the inner wall of the tank. So that's driving us very crazy. So we have to redesign the tank to solve the problems. Now, at last, I want to show the Alibaba progress and the future plan about the uh, immersion cooling. By the end of the 2018, we nearly spent two years in phase one. In phase one, we built the whole system with validation and the pylon, include the uh, several tank, data center, network switches, and, uh, and the long-term reliability test. In phase one, we will deploy quite a number of immersion cooling systems to accumulate the long-term reliability and performance data. In phase one, we take full advantage of the, um, of the uh, air cooling system, such as the motherboard, such as some, some other PSU or some, something so to, uh, to make the schedule faster. So in phase two, we will design a new server that is wholly customized for immersion cooling and uh, mass deployment. Alibaba really hopes that our partners can be with us to create a new, different, and fundamental changes in the servers, data center, in the infrastructure industry. So, summary and key takeaways. First, immersion cooling is a better way to tackle the high power density challenges in future. Two, immersion cooling is not far away, but still needs ecosystem partners to support. Three, Alibaba is the first CSP to deploy the immersion cooling system willing to contribute to the community. Thank you very much. Is there any question about this? I have a question. Ah, okay. So in the PUEs that you, you described earlier, I assume that that includes the server fan inside the IT equipment workload, correct? I don't Is know. it a cooling system? So, uh, so when you do the PUE calculations that you showed, the standard way of doing it would be to include the server fans as part of the IT load. But when you do an immersion cooling system, we remove all of those. Yeah. So the PUE actually, for if you do a true immersion cooling calculation, yes. and you compare air to immersion cooling, all of those numbers go up by about 15%. So everybody's PUE is actually 15% higher than we publish. Because when, you, when you've done your immersion cooling, by removing the fans, obviously you have to adjust for that. Did you do that in the calculations that you showed here, or did you just use the standard air-cooled PUEs? Mm. I may not be explaining this. Okay. We uh, calculated the PUE. Yes, you're right. We, the 1.5 is air-cooling system. There is a fan in server. There is a fan, okay. Yeah, there is a fan. Yep. The immersion cooling, there's no fan. No fan. No fan. So in fact, the 1.05 for air is really, to compare it to immersion, is really like 1.16. Maybe more, yes. Or even more, right. Yeah. Okay, I just yes. wanted to thank you. Yes. Uh, did you put uh, the power supply also in the immersion tank? Or just the server 
when you, just when you do your testing. Just a server. Yeah. A server. Yeah. yeah. No tank. Yeah, when you talked about the ecosystem development for immersion cooling, what are the specific maybe challenges you see in the short term and long term around that ecosystem development? Do you mean uh, what the short term or long term challenges of the ecosystem? Yeah. Okay, so good question. Um, the short term uh, challenges is we think the it's not very big. The long term uh, is more challenging to us. Because if we build a POC, it's OK. It's, if one of the system just run one year, OK. But the three to five years, the uh, reliability data, the maintenance, the uh, ecosystem, they cannot make sure the, um, it can be um, support that in a, in a, uh, in a formal uh, contract or something, you know that? So for example, we want um, we want an company, the stock is very high, an company to uh, give us a, a a version of immersion devices, GPU. So it's very hard to push that. So the HDD, the uh, memory, SSD, the CPU, it's OK. For, long, for, for, for short term challenge, it's OK. The long term, maybe we can, we can start together. We want to invest this, yeah. But the, for some, some special devices, such as the, uh, I mentioned the GPU, or some, some, some optical, some a little corner case, uh, corner devices, may be a big challenge to us. So I think this is the, the, is the uh, main reason why the uh, immersion cooling was not popular uh, deployed. This is a big challenge, but our Alibaba want to do this because we think we calculate the TCO is better than the traditional air cooling. So we have to do this. We have to invest this. And we are the uh, big customer to all of the ecosystem. If we want to do this, I think the ecosystem will give response, give a, a better reply to that. Even some, some vendors like, like CPU, like the biggest CPU vendor, and the um, biggest HDD vendor, and the biggest uh, uh, fluid vendor, the biggest uh, memory or SSD, they, they have joined up to us. To have be with us to do this. Okay. Um, I just had a question about the uh, rack density with the immersion cooling. Is it higher than the uh, air cooling? Um, in the TCO. Calculation: If the um, uh, if the power density is less than 25 or 30 kilowatts per rack, is no need to do this. Actually, it's enough. But if more than that, the immersion cooling is better. If if the power density can be 60 uh, 60 K watts per rack, even more than 100 K watts per rack, is more better. Yeah, it's, it's the best. It's the best way to solve this high density. Okay. 
Next, uh, how the maintenance work? For example, if you have a one bad dim or something, you want to replace it. What kind of procedure you have to do? Drain whole liquid, dry, and swap, and defill, or any other better way to do that? <laughs> sorry, sorry, I, I didn't get it. The maintenance, if you want to swap the part inside, what kind of procedure you have to do? Uh, you mean the maintenance? Maintenance, yes. Oh, okay. Replacing the parts inside. Okay. It's very, it's, it seems very simple. Just pull up the, 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 the cover and pull the silver out. Yeah, and pull down this to change the silver. It's very simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the silver was, uh, um, the, it's a front, front uh, maintenance, front operation. So you, you will not, it's not the rear uh, maintain. Okay. Hey, uh, uh, just a quick question. You, you mentioned optical devices as being one component, I'm right here, <laughs> that uh, was incompatible with the, uh, with the solution you're using. Did you find any other components, low level components that, that were problematic? being submerged or not well sealed or? So sorry, I, I'm sorry, so far, I, I didn't you, get it. You, you mentioned optical devices as being non-compatible. Yeah. Are a, other components that need to be avoided on the board? Um, yes, we test a lot of components that um, I mentioned the, the dual mode um, optical is not compatible. But that's the only one that you found that wasn't compatible. Um, Everything we, else in the server can be submerged for long periods of time and run. Um, in my opinion, we uh, the all the components in the traditional air cooling system can be immersed in the uh, fluid. In the uh, optical, the, 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 the dual mode optical modules, in my memory, is the, the first. I didn't find another. Yeah. Uh, we got a few over here. Hold on. Yeah, you mentioned about the single mode optics. I think some of them may actually have air gaps, you know, and those will not also not work because the, uh, the refractive index would be different. But uh, my, uh, other, my real question is about you know, the way that you describe how you're going to remove the server. It's almost like a, you have to take a 42RU you know, server and, and lay it down on, on the ground, right? So, because otherwise, you can't really have a tank, a 42RU like a tank, and put all these servers because all the liquid is going to leak out. So are you, laying, are you envisioning that these racks would be laid horizontally and then maybe like a bunk bed, you know, have it like a... How are you going to ha build the density that you need um, without sacrificing the space? Oh, okay. I, I think I can understand the question. You mean the tank was laid down, so the high density is, uh, is hard to... Okay, okay. So uh, we said that, I said that uh, in phase two, we will build a, a, new, a new server customized for the uh, immersion cooling. So the, in the traditional egg cooling uh, data center, it's one U server is uh, mm, it's high density you, because you can build uh, um, more than 40 servers in a rack. But in the egg cooling, uh, immersion cooling system, we can build one U, three node, or more than three node in one U spaces. So, because the, um, we didn't need any heatsink. The heatsink is very, very flat. It just spread the, uh, the, 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 the thermal dissipation. Fl very flat heatsink. The heatsink is not a, a space problem. So we can design a new customize for the immersion cooling system. <coughs> okay. Hi, my name is Rolf Brink from Asperitas. Um, 
I can honestly say that we have solved most of these challenges that you are presenting here. Yeah. Uh, how can we help you? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very good. Yeah. That's the one we want to uh, um, talk to our partners. Yeah. Um, although we cannot provide a very detailed data uh, in the offline, we, at the offline, we talked a lot about this. Uh, some some big biggest uh, GPU vendor. They, I, I want we want to tell them this is the future. One day you should be prepared for that. Yeah, for component capability test and uh, join us. You can put your uh, devices. Give it to me too to immerse the fluid, we can test that, yeah. So, so it's okay, we can talk later.